Hey there, golfers. Drew Mahold here with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter. Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm really excited. It's the first chance I get a chance to hit some shots in the new Minnetonka Tour Van. So this is really exciting. Yeah, uh, Minnetonka has been renovated. Um, it's looking great. Uh, great facility here for those in the Twin Cities. Today we're going to do a player's cavity test, eight different models. Um, Thomas is going to hit 48 shots for us today. Are you ready for that, Thomas? <laughs> I'm ready. What are the clubs that I'm going to be testing? Yeah, we got eight different models. We got Shrixon Z785, Mizuno MP20 MMC, the new level 902 Forged, Callaway Apex Pro, TaylorMade P760, the Ping I210, Titleist T100, and Mira MC501. Essentially, it's going to be six shots per club. Yep. yep. Six shots per club. We got eight different models. This is kind of by popular demand. We had a lot of feedback from our players' distance. Um, iron video, uh, kind of wanting us to uh, kind of transition into that player's cavity category. So we're going to do that today with um, all kind of the popular and new models out there on the market for you. Uh, Thomas, you know, the player's cavity category, based on your background of it and based on your background of the models that we're going to test today, uh, what do you think we're going to see? You know, what I really like to look for is dispersion. Yep. With, with these clubs, if there's one club that is really nice, tight dispersion, you know, with these clubs, you're not looking to hit it 200 yards. We're just trying to make sure we hit it the right distance mm -hmm. every single time. So I'm really curious to see consistency. You know, these clubs, you know, they're going to be in that kind of more traditional loft, kind of 32 to 34 degree loft. A couple of them might be a little bit stronger, the 32 degree range. Yeah. So they may go a little bit further. But I'm generally just interested to see how they fly, if they're workable, and how consistent, consistent yeah. they are. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Golfers out there, um, if you enjoy the video, feel free to give us a like and then subscribe to our channel. We'll be doing a lot more content like this in the future. Thomas, let's hit 48 shots, huh? Sounds good. Let's do it. Okay, Thomas, what do you think, first of all, look and feel of the Shrixon Z785? It is a very clean looking club, very thin top line for, yeah. you know, for a cavity back. It you know, probably presents probably one of the smaller club head size that we're going to actually hit today. Um, looking down at, like I said, very, very clean players are and look down at. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like off the club face, it was really, really solid off the face. Yeah. I, I'm not used to hitting it carrying my seven iron about well, I think it was about 188 to 190 yeah. kind of every single time like I did with with that particular club so uh, yes it is a little stri slightly stronger lofted club that I'm used to yeah. 32 degrees of loft on it versus the traditional kind of 34 35 degrees of loft um, which would explain why I'm going a little sure. bit a little bit further essentially every uh, mile an hour more of uh, ball speed that I get is about two yards so I noticed okay. my ball speed was hovering a little bit over 130 yeah so I was yeah it was going yeah, just a little bit further than I was used to. Hitting it very solid, yeah. and then obviously your dispersion, you had a couple that were right on the center line here, and then yeah. that draw did come into play a little bit. You're kind of right to left shot, but overall, I mean, that's pr a pretty solid start there for, for Shrixon. Yeah, that last shot I hit, that was probably the outlier. That was definitely one that I, that I pulled for sure. Yeah. Um, didn't feel like it was a little bit off. I mean, you got you know, these ones further, here. But those other ones were pretty, pretty straight, nice and accurate. <laughs> yeah. No, so pretty good for going 190 yards. Yeah, you yep. got that right. Uh, all right, we can go to club number two. All right, so what do you got? We got TaylorMade P760, 33 degrees of loft. Okay, so slightly si weaker. Yep, and 62 and a half degree line angle. Okay, so it is about half a degree more yeah. upright than the uh, Strix on ones. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, well, let's see how far this thing goes. You know, I'll try and keep my swing as similar as I can. Oh, yeah. I think my club speed was hovering about 90, 91 now, miles an hour. So if we can keep that going as we hit all these eight clubs. Sure. It's a lot to ask. I'll do my best. Nice. Another one. Look at those last two. 
They're right on top of each other. Yep, those were <coughs> right on top of each other, those last two shots. Thomas, P760, again, look and feel. How did it compare to the Shrixon? Looking down at it, um, pretty similar size looking down at it. I say Myths may have ever so slightly thicker top line compared to the, the Strixon uh, 785. It felt like the Strixon was maybe a little bit more solid off the club face. Okay. I, I did notice that it was going just a little bit further. And obviously the Strixon was a little stronger laughter. This has got a little less laughed on it, so it's probably going to... Yeah. Uh, a little more laughed on it, sorry, so it's probably not going to go quite as far. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this felt really, really good off the face. Um, just didn't feel like it was jumping off the face quite as fast. Okay. It's kind of the only difference, yeah. I, I think it's very kind of almost scary how similar these dispersion circles are between the two. <laughs> Just a little bit. I mean, obviously the, the P760 didn't go quite as far. You got about, mm, yeah. you know, I don't know what the yardage difference would be there. What, five yards-ish? Yeah. Ten well, yards, I'm maybe? I'm seeing with that uh, <laughs> P760, that looks like, there must be two dots right here, right? There are two dots yeah. right on top of each other right here. So. Can't tell, but yeah, there is actually two dots there. Yeah. Oh, but uh, that's another solid outing there. Yeah, that was really nice tight dispersion there. Obviously, there's one that left. First shot I hit left to the right, probably yeah. the outlier as well. Um, but everything else was. But I mean, yeah, you're going to get a yeah. circle right here. Yep. Yeah. But uh, that's, and yeah, I mean, that, those are very tight dispersion circles. If we were to zoom out to really what the fairway is, yep. It's pretty tight. The only thing I noticed when I was hitting the shots and look, take, taking a look at the numbers was the spin rate between the two of them right away. Oh, yeah. I noticed that the Strix arm was spinning probably about 5,500 on average, um, and then the table oh, was spinning 6,300. Yeah. That's why it was going a lot further. Mm. Yeah, so. A lot of difference in spin. Interesting. It was like the Strix arm was like a spin killer almost. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So depending on what you're after, obviously both great dispersions. Yeah. If you want to hit maybe a little further, we'll less spin. That's Do you know with your option. gamer what your typical spin number is? I'm usually around about 5,800. Okay, you know, so you're kind of splitting the difference with these two. Yeah, normally when I hit like a little bit of a draw, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be at that 7,000 mark that everyone, sure. with the traditional loft of 35 degree 7 iron would normally be. Uh, as lines get stronger over the last few years, what was going to spin less because there's less loft on the club. Um, but the fact that we can still hit the ball high enough and have that descent angle into the green gives yeah. plenty of stopping power as well. So. Okay. Yep. Nice. Well, let's go to club number three. All right. What do we got next? We got, uh, we'll go new level. Go new level? All right. This is a un unique one. I actually haven't hit this one yet. So. Yeah. So the 902, 32 degrees, Thomas. Okay. And 62 degree line angle. So very, actually the same loft and line measurements as the Strixon. Strixon. All right. So interesting to see how it compares versus the Strixon. That's six. That is six. All right. So Thomas, first of all, again, look and feel new level versus the Taylor Maynard tricks on you fit already. I touched on it briefly before. Very, very shiny. It's yep. probably the shiniest club I've ever looked down at, actually. Really? It's yeah, very shiny. Um, Which I know you yeah. like that. I look. do like that. This has almost got too much shininess to it. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I'd be worried if I was playing the blinding sun without sunglasses that this, you know, sure. reflection on this might be pretty, pretty shiny. I do like how it's the same look on the entire club face, so it's like kind of the same blend all the way across. Okay. Um, I, what I did notice, though, is it seemed kind of square-shaped at setup. So hmm. it felt like it was more kind of like a square as opposed to having some more rounded edges with other, other okay. clubs. That's the one thing I did notice. Maybe a little bit more thicker top, thin, thicker top line as well. well thicker on, top yeah, line? Thicker top line on that. Kind of more square shaped setup. What about the feel? Feel off the face is you know, very good. Feel off the, off the club face forged. Um, yeah. yeah, so maybe not quite as solid as a couple of the other, as for example, the Strixon that had the same loft on it. We noticed obviously didn't quite go quite as far as the Strixon did. Yeah. Um, but it felt really, maybe a little softer than the Strixon off the face, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it felt, felt pretty good. Yeah, I mean, look at your dispersion here. You kind of got the your first shot, you kind of flared a little bit. But yep. other than that, you know, you're kind of hovering sort of around kind of in between the TaylorMade and the Shrix on there a little bit. So, yeah. so um, that first shot was that short right one, right? Yes, yep. yes. It's a kind of a typical trend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've so, done that a couple then, times I mean, now. You know, you're, you were carrying a 183, which kind of falls in between the first two. Yep. 
and then uh, you know your total distance is also kind of right in between the other two. So okay. it was still spinning. So it was still spinning. I think 6200 was it? Yeah, 6200 yep, 62. on, on average there. So that's kind of similar to the TaylorMade. Yep. But similar to TaylorMade, but had one degree uh, less loft on the TaylorMade, so the same degree of loft mm -hmm. on the Strixon. Yeah, so interesting that it wasn't going quite as far as the Strixon, even right. though it's the same loft. So. Yeah. Yep. All right. Very cool. Club number four. Get you on Callaway Apex Pro. Ooh, I like this club. I played this club for a couple months this year myself. Definitely a different looking shape to the last club yeah. for sure. More rounded. More rounded. More rounded shape. A yeah, a little compact, bit different more than more rounded. Uh, yep. And then we got 33 degrees of loft here, yep. 62 degree lie angle. So um, this is, in terms of loft, similar to the TaylorMade. Same at 33 okay. and then 62 degree lie angle we've had a couple times too. Yep. So kind of about the norm. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. Like that one. That's a really good one to end on there. The Callaway Apex Pro versus the ones that I guess we've hit so far. For me, this is probably the, I like how the shape's rounded. Um, it's probably the most compact head that I have also hit as well. Really? Okay. Um, and that's two reasons why I did play this club for, for a little bit as well. Um, off the club face, it just feels so solid. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just yeah. not going to take it off for, for sure. Um, you know, it's, it's keeping up there with, with the Strix on with regards to numbers there. Um, we'll notice those five blue circles that are pretty close together, with the exception of the one that's way left. Right, that yeah, which we might have an outlier out here with this one. Yet, but yet, uh, so. I yeah. notice the spin is down on the Callaway Apex mm -hmm. versus New Level and TaylorMade here. Um, yep. And I know that was something that you mentioned too. Yeah, before. so the reason why I switched out of these clubs was because it's okay with the more lofted clubs, but with, with those stronger lofted clubs like the four, five, six iron, ball was just wasn't spinning enough for me. You know, yeah. while I was hitting it almost too far. It was just okay. gapping wise, it wasn't quite gapping sure. nicely there. Okay. So I ended up doing kind of more of a combo set to try and offset that so I could control the ball a little bit better. Gotcha, okay. Um, yeah. I don't play, as, I don't practice as much as I used to. So I figured I'd maybe want to go towards something that's going to be maybe a little bit more kind of forgiving like this. This has got hidden forgiveness in it for sure. Yeah. Um, but in the end, I, you know, I'm still a pretty good bull striker. I got over that fact. I went more towards a kind of muscle back and uh, the X-Forge kind of combo set. Okay. To try and, you know, make sure, get a little more spin, get a little more workability back in my game. Gotcha. And keep yep. the consistency of your gapping as well. Correct. I'm, I'm yep. assuming. Um, yep. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that was four. So we're halfway there. Get you into the, let's go Mira. Let's go Mira, all right. MC501, another brand we haven't tested a ton. Wow, that felt good off the face. Yeah, good start. Very soft, forged feel. Yeah. All right, that's six. Hmm. This one impressed me a lot. Really impressed really? me, yeah. You know, after hitting the Callaway Apex Pro right before this, you know, that club felt really solid off the face. Mm -hmm. Like it was just going. This has got that buttery, soft, forged okay. feel off the face. So but it, it does have a little bit of a different feel, but it's not like it's a bad thing, right? You're, you really, I know that was the first, your first shot you hit, you're like, oh, this is really soft. Yep. Not a bad thing at all. No. Um, you, know, you know, I think I also mentioned workability as well. I was able to hit mm -hmm. that gentle little drawer every single time that I hit with right. this club. The other ones would maybe kind of a little bit straighter and a little bit more spread out as yeah. opposed to the dispersion with four or five of the shots with this one, just that gentle mm -hmm. little drawer as well, so. Yeah, and uh, I mean, in terms of distance, you know, it, it, it kept up despite the highest loft so far. 
It did. Um, yeah, it kept up. Um, you know, it carried 182 on average, which is very similar. I mean, you got the new level is 183. Obviously, the P760 was 178. So, I mean, it's got extra loft, but it it uh, kept up with so far the competitors in terms yeah. of distance. So that's good. Yeah, this is probably you know thin thin top line as well. So I you know I love the look down on the thin, thinner yeah. top line. Most players do like that look as well. Um, it's maybe a little bit more sharper corner, toe corner, um, but definitely the smallest tail I've hit so far. But I hit it really solid. I really yeah. really liked it actually. Yeah. It, it impressed me a lot. So well, that's good. Yep. Yeah, yep. I mean we had, we haven't done a lot of mirror stuff, so. Yeah. Uh, that's good though that we got some good feedback there. All right, we'll switch to, let's go Mizuno. Mizuno. MP20, MMC. So MMC, 32 degrees aloft. And then and another. I know you've, you've loved the feel of the MP20 series, I know, so far. So we'll see how yeah. it performs anyway, in terms of the data. Three pretty consistent yeah. shots in a row there. Little three baby draws. Yeah. Spoiled it. Didn't quite catch it. Eh. Oh, fine. that would be the outlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you start talking about that kind of stuff, then you go mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Thomas, again, look and feel with Mizuno. I know you've liked. Um, the, and Mizuno irons, the MP20 series from that aspect, kind of throughout all their testing. Coming off hitting the mirror before and then hitting the Mizuno, I think both these two are the, probably the best feeling off the face. Soft, buttery, forged mm -hmm. feel. I think I keep saying that about this club every single time. Yeah. Um, incredible off the face. I mm -hmm. think those first five swings that I just hit with this in a row, I don't think I right. could do that at, at five times in a row with yeah, Any I other mean, time. So looking at the circle, the this last one was, here, yeah. this last one is kind of the one that maybe missed a little bit, but yep. then you have five little tiny circles right in, the, right in the middle of really of all of your shots. So in terms of precision, the dispersion, the MP20 MMC did really well in this yeah, test. Really, really good. And then I kind of touched on how I like how it's got this kind of like gray to chrome kind of transition. Yeah. Um, from the groove sits to the face to the outside part. I like yeah. I like that as opposed to just be purely shiny across the entire okay. face. Yeah. yeah, give this one a thumbs up for sure. Nice. Yeah, yeah. distance was kept up, mighty fine. It was yep. really good. Um, all right, we'll go to club number seven. Nearly uh, done there, Thomas. We we'll go ping. ping. All right. I two ten. All right. Ping loft thirty three degrees. Lie angle sixty two. Okay. We're back in that kind of that typical yeah. 62 lie angle for a seven iron. Yep. That's six. I feel like my ball speed was pretty consistent with that one around 129 every single time. Yeah, Thomas, what do you think of the I ten, I two ten in terms of look and feel, kind of? I know you came off of two really good feeling irons. Yep. Um, what do you think about the ping? I mean, with this being cast versus forged with, with the other two, yeah. I definitely noticed this was more solid off the face. Yeah. Wasn't quite as soft. However, it wasn't a bad thing because I feel like it was, it felt solid, but it was still doing this, the same thing every yeah. single time. I think I touched on that ball speed being about 129 every single time. So the consistency was there with this club, which yeah. I really, really liked. Yeah. yeah. It definitely uh, performed. I mean, looking at the dispersion, the distance well, on all of them, I mean, you stayed within a yard of carry every single time, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. 181.4 and then 182.6, that's the, your range of carry, which is, if you're that consistent over that many shots, that's pretty darn good, so. Yeah. That was yeah. good. That's good to see. And then looks wise, you know, a little larger than the than the last couple of models that, that I hit. Um, obviously hitting hitting mirror, um, you know, that was a little bit smaller off, off the face. Mm -hmm. um, and the Mizuno, you know, probably pretty similar size to Mizuno, the Mizuno head. Um, it just 
The shape wise, it just seems like it's got a couple of sharper edges to it, okay. essentially, as opposed to sure. liking. For me, I like a club that's got kind of more rounded edges to it as well. Okay. So, yeah. But very, very good consistency. I'd say this is definitely a very good consistent club for, yeah. for players. So. For sure. Uh, last but not least, we will transition to Titleist. All right. The T100. All right, what'd you think of that? The Titleist T100 look and feel, performance? You know, I really like the look of it. Once again, when I touched on it with the Mizuno Club, I love how that's got that contrast from the gray yeah. to, the, to the chrome kind of contrast from the face to the, to the, out to the outside edges of the club face. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the way that looks. As I mentioned, um, this is a little more compact than say the AP2 used to be. So yeah. looking down at it, it's a little thinner top line, just a little more you know, smaller. Which I know you, I know you like. Um, yep. That might, I mean, I was not going to appeal to everybody, but for a player's, yep. um, player's iron, it, it shows more like a player's iron versus the maybe AP2s of the past did. Um, looking at the numbers in terms of spin, I think this was the highest spinning iron yep. that you hit. Um, looking at that or the uh, P760 tailor made. Interesting. Yeah. Um, those are the two highest spinning ones for you. It's kind of being the case with. AP2, T100, they're the higher spinning clubs yeah. out of kind of usually the one. Yeah, it's more loft on it, so you'd expect it maybe to spin sure. a little bit more as well. But what, from what I've noticed in a lot of fittings is T100, AP2 line spins the most out of a lot of irons. So okay. if we need a, if a player that needs more spin, it's right. not a bad option. Obviously, you know, this club's maybe not quite as forgiving as previous AP2 models might, might be. Still plenty of forgiveness built in, but it's definitely a little bit more compact yeah. size than, than previous models. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And even just looking at the distance too, Titleist was you know, not as strong in the distance, but again, we should expect that given the loft, lie angle, et cetera. It yep. was kind of built, and with the more spin, it's gonna be built to kind of not travel as far, but I mean, the dispersion was pretty darn good. Dispersion was still pretty good, yep. All right, so I took out one outlier per club. These mm -hmm. were the best five of six shots that we hit out of, mm -hmm. out of each club here. So. Let's take a look and see how well I did with regards to club speed. So I know I tried to keep it as kind of accurate as I possibly right. could all the way through here. Um, Titleist T100 was basically 91 miles an hour. That was the last club that I hit. We'll notice that range is up to about 92.8. Yep. 90, yeah, 90.8 to 92.8. So about two mile an hour more with the Mizuno. Um, everything else was essentially 91 miles an hour if we yep. look across the board there. Yeah, so really interesting. Did a pretty good job with regards to keeping that as right. unbiased as mm -hmm. we possibly could. Ball speed. So ball speed, if we look at all the numbers, the club that had the highest ball speed out of them all, which I find really interesting, Callaway Apex Pro. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. So I know in our player's distance review the Apex the standard Apex was one of the highest performers there. And you know now the Apex Pro doing pretty well in terms of ball speed in the player's cavity category, which right. I know for a lot of players that play an iron like this, the ball speed isn't necessarily the number one factor in the decision, but yep. worth noting that you know Callaway in terms of distance in their irons seems to be performing throughout all their categories. Very, very interesting, yeah. Um, but I, I find it interesting because it's not the strongest loft club, loft club out there. Yeah, that's So also we had, I believe it was, um, was it? MP20. Yep, MP20, Strixon, Strixon, and then the new level, the new level. 32 okay. degrees. And they were at 130.8, 130.8, and 130.2. 130.2. So that's interesting that, that the uh, Apex Pro, even though it had one degree less loft on it, was outperforming yeah. those three. So. Right. And, I mean, you even, it's not like you were swinging that one the fastest either. Apex Pro, so correct. Another extra, yep. some extra pop off the club. A little face extra there, maybe. pop, yeah. A little added juice, I guess yeah. you could say, in, in the Apex Pro. Mm -hmm. And if we look at smash factor, I'm going to guess that's probably going to be the highest smash factor too. Yeah, 144. Srixon was also up there. Srixon 144. Yep. Sorry, 1.44 smash. Yep. So that was the first club that I did hit. I remember that one was going pretty far. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, so really interesting there. Launch angle should be pretty similar for the most part, between about 18 and 20 degrees with all of them, the ones that have less loft. Well, it should launch uh, probably a little bit less. Yeah. You know, Srix on new level, those two are launching a little bit lower yeah. because there's less loft on them. Spin rate is where I want to, I really want to kind of jump into the spin rate. Because I mentioned the first one we hit was the Srix on 785. I feel mm -hmm. like that was kind of that spin killer. So that was 5,400 RPMs of spin. Um, Apex Pro was 5,700 RPM, so it was a pretty low spinning model as well. Uh, Mizuno, basically 6,000. So there was really only two to three models that were spinning under 6,000 RPMs. Yeah. Um, the highest spinning one was the Titleist T100, yep. 6,350 6, basically. Mm -hmm. So we've got a pretty big range there. We've got about 900 RPM range between them. The Tailmade P760 also was a high spinning club. Yeah. 60 to 63 was the yeah. spin rate. And that did that fall too. in between kind of the loft range. It was at 33, so it does yep. it did spin a little bit extra relative to its loft versus it did, yeah. like the Mira, I believe was also 34, but it spun less than the P760 did. Correct. Yep. All right. Um, yeah, so typically the lower the loft on the club, the lower the spin rate is going to be. Yeah. The higher the loft, the higher the spin rate is usually going to be. Right. Um, because I do hit the ball pretty solid, I hit the ball fairly high, we can get away with less spin. So sure. we'll notice, for example, we just go jump to the Apex Pro, for example, you'll notice I was hitting this thing pretty high, so 135 yep. feet in the air. Um, carry distance was 186 going 190, so it was stopping really, really yep. fast. it was. I can get away with it, but if a player has less club speed, doesn't hit the ball as high, and that spin rate still stays pretty low, that's when you might get in trouble about have stopping power on the green. Right, okay. Yeah. So that that's why, sense. you know, I can particularly can get in, in, uh, away with it because I hit the ball pretty high enough, got a steep landing angle, get yeah. the ball stopping on the green. Um, my, you know, I, I have pretty good solid contact. Right. Uh, so that's why I can get away with it. If we look at carry distance, we have 176, or well basically 177 with a T100 carry, um, going all the way up to... I think you're one. 189 with the Strixon. Mm -hmm. Strixon is the highest carry, 189. So range of about basically one club difference between that. So obviously we didn't really test. You know, there's only two degree difference between those two. So yeah. the Strixon was going further because it was spinning less, even though yeah. it didn't quite have that four degree difference yeah. between. Yeah, and also it. remember you mentioned that pop off the face too. You thought there was a pretty solid feel off yep. the Strixon G785. You get the, a lower loft at 32. Uh, and then a low spin, that's going to result in kind of the, the longest carry distance there. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So I want to touch on uh, dispersion. Okay. So dispersion, for me, when you were looking at a player's cavity iron is probably the number one thing that's more important. At yep. the end of the day, these players typically are going to be your better players that want to get that ball closer to the hole. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it really comes down to dispersion. Right. What stands out to me right away is that green circle that's right in the middle. Yeah. Um, the green circle is right in the middle between everything, probably the straightest, smallest circle. That is the Mizuno MP20 MMC. So I would probably give that the rating, the best rating based on dispersion yeah. out, of, out of them all. When I was hitting it, I think also those were five in a row. Those were my first yeah. five shots that I yeah. hit as well. So I was talking about that as I was hitting that too. So yeah. felt very, very consistent. We got other some other pretty good competition here. I talked about consistency with the Ping I-210. Yeah. So that's this red circle. Yeah, that's that really was, good too. That's really good dispersion as well. That was really good. And it actually looks like it's probably a little bit smaller from kind of north to south here too. So mm -hmm. notice how consistent it was, and whether I kind of hit it kind of left or right yeah. or not. But it was doing the same thing every single time. So it was going the same distance. Um, the Mirror MC501 was also pretty consistent as well with regards to distance. So yeah. notice how it also kind of left to, you know, north to south was pretty consistent there as well. Um, we, we noticed the new level 902, probably the largest dispersion circle yeah. out, of, out of them all there. Um, we got a couple left, went out to the right, a couple short. Um, so dispersion was kind of a little bit off. Uh, we noticed that one's probably going a little bit further. So was the Strixon 785. Yep. Usually when the ball goes further, the dispersion, you expect that dispersion should be maybe a little bit larger yeah. as well. Which we'll but see you can here. see though those circles were a little bit larger. So yeah. 
Yes, the Strixon went the furthest out of, out of all the ones that we hit. It was the lowest spinning model out of them all. Yeah. But it may have been a little bit harder for me to control and hit a little straighter. Sure. So. Absolutely. That's kind of what you yeah. sacrifice when you get that A, a lower loft, but B, just a little bit more pop off the club face. If the players are looking for that, which the, you know plenty do in a player's cavity, yep. you're going to be sacrificing a little bit of that uh, accuracy in terms of the dispersion. So Correct. that's one thing noted here. Um, so Thomas, in terms of look feel, I know you were pretty high on uh, Mizuno. Uh, and also the Mira at MC501, I think impressed you a little bit as well in terms yep. of the feel. Both you said were very soft. Um, in terms of the look, I know you also like the new level as well, the kind of the shiny design on that as well. But um, any other thoughts you had in terms of look and feel and maybe anything you noticed out of the eight models? That's interesting. I, I think about like the, the Japanese brands, yep. like the look and feel of those. You know, you talk about Mizuno, we talked about Mira. Um, Strixon as well, I really, you know, I like the feel of that off the club face as yeah. well, the look of that, looking down at it as well. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, I give those a, very, a good thumbs up for regards to look and feel off, yeah. off the face for sure. And then uh, obviously we looked, we talked a little bit about the dispersion and the performance. Um, I think you touched right away on Mizuno, the dispersion was pretty tight. Ping was pretty tight in there as well. And then in terms of the distance consistency, Miro did pretty well there as well. Yeah, exactly. Those, those three, I think, Mizuno MP20, it wowed me mm -hmm. with regards to all, all these numbers. I, I keep coming back to hitting five in a row. And when you hit yeah. four or five shots in a row that do the exact same every single time, right. not only mm -hmm. was it kind of doing the same kind of distance every time, but it was the same ball flight every right. time. It was that gentle little draw that I like to hit. Yeah. So that's really what I found that was really, really interesting yeah. with, with that club there. Uh, workability, the mirror, I was able to also draw a little bit too. Um, there was a couple other clubs that maybe were just a little bit harder for me to kind of work mm -hmm. as well with in this category. I'd expect in this category to be able to work the ball right to left or left to right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Really, eight really good models here. I mean, I mean, looking at everything, these are in the we're kind of nitpicking at this point in terms we of are, the performance because yes. they're all very good. They all performed really well. Yep. It's just now we're getting down to nitty gritty, and obviously these numbers might be different based on the golfer that's hitting them as well. This is kind of how it tested for you and then your opinion on look and feel. Correct, exactly. Everyone's going to react differently to golf clubs, how they look, perceive the look of it, yeah. how it feels off the club face. This is just to give a general idea of how they're all kind of performing against each other with regards to numbers, spin rate. Obviously, I mentioned at this level of golf club, we want dispersion, so how tight the dispersion yeah. was. So we had some really good performance, performers here. You know, I would definitely throw in the mix. Ping I-210 was very consistent. Yep. Mizuno MP. 20 MMC was probably all around very, very good, consistent, also the right ball flight that I wanted to hit every single time. If we look at a distance, the Strixon 785 and the Apex Pro, those two were performing really yep. well with regards to distance. Well, yep. Thomas, thanks for hitting 48 shots for us to look at. Um, eight great models for golfers out there uh, between in that player's cavity category. Great stuff, Thomas, uh, to analyze the data, great dispersion all around. Um, eight great models again to choose from for golfers out there.